All I need to do is plug this in without having to do double duty with my middle finger. I'll just do it like this. Brilliant. Oh, this is just too good. Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. As you know, I'm a big fan of arcade sticks and recently I've been getting into these. They are button-based controllers, left, down, right, and jump instead of having a traditional arcade stick. But you can actually build a controller like this. But let's say that you want to get into these button box controllers and you don't really want to go and build one from scratch all by yourself. Well, that's why these have just come in. Ladies and gentle beans, this is known as the Cardi Mod Plus, and as you can see, it looks very simple. It's like the up, down, left, right keys that you would find on a traditional keyboard. And as you know, in previous videos, I've actually checked out controllers like the Mixbox, which are mainly an up, down, left, right controller. But this one is slightly different because there's a little port here at the bottom, and if you connect this to it, it becomes very similar to the button box controllers like these ones, where you use your thumb over here on your right hand or your left hand to jump. Now these were actually sent to me by AS Indo for the purposes of making this video, but I'm allowed to say whatever I want. I wasn't instructed to say anything specific. And they actually cost $27.50 for something like this, and I think about $25 for the thumb attachment. So the theory is, if you already own an arcade stick, you should just be able to buy this, drop this straight in, take your arcade stick out, like so, and then just drop this straight in, and then you've got yourself a, a button box controller using a really nice arcade stick that you may already own. And the other thing that's kind of unique is that instead of a thumb button, it uses a space bar. So especially if you're coming from the PC world, you're probably used to pressing the space bar here to jump. And actually, this should feel very much like a space bar. Anyway, I've got a million questions that I want answered as soon as possible. So let's jump straight in and plug this, the Cardi Mod Plus, into a traditional arcade stick. All right, to put this Cardi Mod Plus into this stick, we're actually going to have to remove this. Now, it's easy to take this off because I've got a Freak Mods link, but normally you would just take the stick apart and you would just pull the whole thing out. That would also be quite simple. So before we put this in like so, let's actually take the stick apart. Okay, we'll just take these screws out of here. Okay, so that has just fallen off like so, and it's got one last connector coming over here. I believe this is the headset. Now that we have the stick open, we need to take this out. This is the joystick portion. Remove the JST connector, the five pin, the five pin connector, which has all of the plugs for the up, down, left, and right. And then let's remove the actual, this is a standard Sanwa JLF lever. Okay, so the Sanwa JLF has come out and hopefully it is just a case of throwing the Cardi Mod in. Let's see how complicated this is. And it's got a nice little hole in it so you can tear it open easily without even needing scissors. Now before I install, I'll just give you a nice good look at the Cardi Mod Plus. It has keyboard keys with, I guess these are Cherry MX switches. I believe they're just standard speed silver switches. In fact, if I pull the cap off, you can see there is a Cherry MX speed silver switch right there. So if you want to experiment with different key caps or different key switches, you can actually pull the whole switch out. Oh, you can actually pull the whole key sword switch out with, with just your fingers. Wow, that was easy. So you can see there, that is the left Cherry MX keyboard switch, and this is just a standard keyboard switch. I've actually got a bunch of these separately. I might actually try, I might actually try some blue switches in here just to see how that feels. Click that in place with my fingers. All right, let's see how it feels. Oh. That is nice and quiet as well. So there are four of these keyboard switches on here if you want the traditional WASD layout. But again, if you want it to act more like a button box controller where you use your thumb to jump, you can buy this extra add-on. But first, let's go ahead and install this. Now on the back of the Cardi Mod Plus, you can see the actual pin connectors. Now just looking at the AS Indo website, it looks like they've put these here for convenience because depending on your arcade stick, the pins are reversed for like the left and the right and the up and the down. So it's saying in the instructions for this, the Quanbo Obsidian, I need to be using this one, the left header. Now one thing about this mod is that it doesn't go directly in the center. You need to put this plug area, which is at the base of the controller, in here. And you'll see it actually, it, it's actually a little bit higher than this circle. So instead of being right here in the middle of the circle, it will be a little bit up like this. They had to put this connector here at the base so that they could get this as low profile as possible because you don't want it bumped way up here while your right hand is like down here on a separate level and your left hand is like a couple inches up in the sky. This is as low as we can get it and then we can just rotate it around to be at exactly the right angle we like. And I personally think I have like quite a shallow angle, something like this. 
will probably be enough. Plug the five pin JLF connector in like so. It doesn't say in the instructions, but I'm guessing that the red cable is here facing down. Now the next thing we need to do to install this is to peel the sticky pad off. We're actually going to stick it to the arcade stick top using this. Stuff that in there and I think this is roughly, roughly correct. Okay, that was super easy. Basically, pull off the adhesive pad, stick it on, plug it in, and you're done. All right, I've got Street Fighter loaded up, and this is the controller in its finished state with the Cardi Mod Plus installed and my standard buttons over here. So let's go straight into the game and see how it plays. Now, the first thing I'm noticing is that you do notice that it is a little bit raised off the stick. As you can see, this is the level of the buttons here, and this is the level of the Cardi Mod. It is quite a bit higher than the buttons, but since I have been playing on button box controllers lately, I don't actually rest my wrists on the controller like this anymore. I kind of Hover, I hover my wrists, but my, my fingers are often touching touching the keys like this. So if you insist on resting your palms on here, you may notice the height difference of these buttons. But if you hover your wrists like this and you have your fingers just resting on the buttons, it's less noticeable for now. But you do, obviously, you do still notice it. So for this layout, if you want to dash forward, you just double tap forward, double tap backwards. And if you want to do your fireballs, you do a circular motion like down, down forward, forward, punch like this. Seems to work very nicely indeed. For people who are familiar with the keyboard layout, you may prefer this layout, but it does mean that your middle finger does double duty. And so if you try to do something like an instant tatsu, which is where you do like a, a tatsumaki like this, and then you do the jump afterwards, then you end up doing a motion like this. Although it is possible, it is harder than doing it with your thumb because with, you've got your thumb, you've got one, two, three different appendages for each button. Whereas if you do it one, two, three, your middle finger needs to do two different actions and needs to move from here to here. But for your standard stuff, you know, jumping in, doing your standard combos like this, you get all of the benefits, I mean, all the benefits, you get most of the benefit of using a controller which is button based, where normally on an arcade stick, you can kind of overshoot because you're going in a full circle. So you can actually go down, down, forward, forward, and then sometimes accidentally press jump. With a button-based controller, that can't really happen because there's no such thing as overshooting and then accidentally pressing the jump button over here because you've got separate appendages for most of the buttons. The other thing that's nice if you're not familiar with button-based layouts is that you're doing the same motion for your left hand and your right hand. On a traditional arcade stick, you're doing left and right motions and you're doing all sorts of gymnastics with your fingers and your thumbs. But when you're using a button-based controller, your left hand and right hand are doing the same motion. There's finger up, finger down, finger up, finger down. It's basically the same thing on the left side and the right side. So so if you know how to type on a keyboard, you probably know how to use this controller. All right, this is kind of unexpected, but it says on the website it doesn't have an SOCD cleaner. So normally on an arcade stick, you can't press left and right at the same time. But because they are split into separate buttons now, you can technically press both at the same time. And if you don't have the right SOCD cleaning solution, you might not be allowed into certain tournaments. However, from what I'm trying over here, even though it says no SOCD included, it does seem to be cleaning my inputs for me. I don't know if that's because I'm playing on the Quambo Obsidian. So maybe the PCB on the Quambo Obsidian is already has already got an SOCD built into it. But right now, plugged into a Quamba Obsidian, it does already do SOCD cleaning for me. So if I press left and right, it gives me neutral. And if I press down and up, I just consistently get up. So those are the SOCD cleaning rules that I understand to be tournament standard. Now, since SOCD does seem to be working correctly, it means you can use quite a lot of these common all button controller shortcuts. Like if you're holding forward, if you double tap backwards, you get like an instant dash. You can also do it while you're holding backwards. You can instant back dash without having to stop. Normally on an arcade stick, you'd be like walking forwards, you would have to stop and then double tap forward to do a forward dash. Walking forward like this, it's just like suddenly jump forward and it's like almost instant. Now, one thing I did mention earlier is that with a Wazid style controller, some of these things like instant tatsus or instant fireballs in the air can be a little bit trickier on this controller. They are doable, but it's a little bit simpler if you use a, a, a controller that has a thumb jump button, which we'll be testing in a moment. But first, let me just show you, if you have got a Wazid controller, this is how you would do it. Normally you would do the fireball like this, but then you would press the jump after you've done the fireball so that you get an, a fireball as low as you can to the ground. So instead of doing something like this where you'd go like jump and then a fireball and you end up with a fireball pretty high up in the sky, you would instead do something like this where you do the fireball first 
and then you get an instant fireball like as low to the ground as you possibly can. Now as you can see it is totally possible to do it on a controller like this but it means that my middle finger is going from down forward and then I'm having to release my finger and go up to press this jump button here. Not impossible but this is one of the main reasons why I don't use a Wazid style controller for 2D games even though really I mean you can do it it's just a little bit harder. Another thing I want to show you is with grapplers, if you're using a Wazid style controller, you need to do the circle motion with these three fingers. And so you go something like this, where you go forward, down, back, and then you lift your middle finger up, and then you use it again for the jump back. Now, although this is actually not too hard to do for the 360 motion, for this character Zangief, he needs to do two circles for his super combo. And that is a little bit trickier on this controller because you'll be going like this for a circle, and then again, so it's like this. And you can see the gymnastics that your middle finger is having to do. It's going down up, down up, down up, down up. And actually, to be honest, I don't think I can actually do it. All right, so I managed to do it once, but it is quite tricky doing this with your finger going down up, down up with your middle finger. But you can train yourself to do it. I just wouldn't personally choose to do it on this controller. Alright, this is the last one I want to show you. If you play a charge character like Guile, normally you charge for a couple seconds, press forward punch, and you get a sonic boom. But actually, one of his most important moves is his flash kick, and normally if you hold down for a couple seconds and then you press up and kick at the same time, you get a flash kick. But like I was mentioning with Kage and also with Zangye, this is one of those characters where your middle finger will have to be doing double duty. So for example, if you're pressing down like this and you want to go up for the flash kick, you need to lift your middle finger off down and then press up with your middle finger like this. You can't really, I mean, you can sort of use your other fingers to press the up button, but it's not very comfortable. Really, this layout is designed for one finger to do two different buttons. So for example, if I'm pressing down like this, I want to do a flash kick. I can let go of the button and I can do it fast like this. Or if I'm holding down back, which is more common, and I'm blocking, and then I want to press up, I can do it like that. But you can see I need to very quickly lift my middle finger off and then press up like this. Now what's really tricky is if you're in a situation where you want to do down back to up forward, in that case you're pressing two fingers down, you're lifting both fingers off and then you're putting two fingers down on different buttons. So if I'm doing down back to up forward, it's like this. And again, it is possible, but it is more tricky because you're doing a lift up, a lift up, and a push down and a push down in completely separate places. When actually with a button-based controller like this, normally you don't even need to let go of the down button because all you need to do is press up, which will override the down input. So for example, if I just cheat here, I wouldn't normally do this in a normal battle, but if I just press jump while I'm already pressing down like this, I can go straight into the summer assault without having to do any of that gymnastics. It just comes out instantly like so. Very, very useful if you're busy down backing your, your enemy and you just want your flash to kick to come out immediately. The other thing is if you're doing Guile's super, I believe you need to go flash kick into supersonic boom. So doing the flash kick into super is tricky because you're doing down back into up forward for the flash kick and then back again and then forward for the supersonic boom. Sonic hurricane, whatever it's called. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, I did it! Wow, I can't believe it! That was, that was really hard. <laughs> that was really hard, but again, as you can see, I need to go from down back to up forward kick, and then back, and then forward with my punch. Personally, in a pinch, in like a stressful battle, I wouldn't want to be focusing on whether I can do this gymnastics with my middle finger. And that is why I'm so excited that AS Endo has also sent me this. It is the thumb up module. So in addition to the Cardi mod, which costs 25 or $27.50, this comes in at $25 and you can add this to your setup. So instead of just having the Wazid layout like this, I can add it here and I'll instead, instead of using this up button here and doing double duty with my middle finger, I'll have one button per finger like so. And I can use my left thumb or my right thumb if I install it right here on my arcade stick. Open it up like a can of a, 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 packet, a packet of sweets. You actually get the thumb up module itself, the cable to connect it, but also just to make sure that you're not disqualified at tournaments. You can also set the original Cardi mod so it's only got three of the buttons showing because obviously if they see that you've got an up button here and an up button down here, they'll be like, uh, you've got too many up buttons, you're disqualified. So if you want to play completely by the books, you'll probably need to use this or just to remove this key entirely. So I'm just loosening this like so, opening it up and this one as well. Let's put the cables in. Now the instructions don't actually say 
what order, whether the red one goes on top or the black one goes on top. So I'm just going to put them in kind of at random. So the cables are going in like so. I'm just going to hold it in place with my hand like this and I'm going to screw the terminals down. All right, that was fairly painless. All I need to do is plug this in and hopefully this will just work like a second up button. If, let's see if it already works. So just jump. Oh, instantly, wow. So I didn't even unplug it from my PlayStation while doing this. I just plugged it straight in and it goes straight and I'm still able to jump up on the up button on the, so I'm able to jump with both the up button and the jump button. Fantastic, this is awesome. Now, generally speaking, I don't really use my left thumb when I use a layout like this, but just in case I'm going to put it here in the middle so that I can have access with both of my thumbs if I want to jump with my right thumb or jump with my left thumb. Just like before, taking the plastic adhesive off the, not the adhesive, the plastic lining off the adhesive. I'll just put it down like so. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Instant button box controller. This is amazing. Hold on a second. So let's just see if it works while I've got Guile out here still. Let's see if I can do the just single button and kick to do a flash kick. Yes. This is amazing. And... SOCD is still in effect. Excellent. So we are tournament ready. Now there are a couple things that I would like to point out about this controller. And one of them is that just like the Cardi mod, it does sit on top of the surface. So as you can see, it is significantly higher than the height of these buttons. And that does feel kind of strange. Normally having your left hand a little bit higher than the right hand, I got used to that immediately. That wasn't really a problem. But getting used to having your left hand a little bit higher and your right thumb a little higher and then your right fingers a little bit lower, you can see that's a little bit strange where it's just like the height difference of my thumb and my fingers, that's going to take some getting used to and you're just going to you're just going to get used to your, your palms being in a much higher position like this. I just got to say aesthetically it looks really funny because you've got a round shaped object with what looks like a a wick. It looks like if you light this end it's going to explode. I think that should be part of the branding. So let's see if we can, just like on a standard button box, if we can do the flash kick into super much more easily without having to do double duty with my middle finger. I'll just do it like this. Brilliant. Oh, this is just too good. All right, let's go back to Sakura and let's just test our standard button box controller things. So not using the up button to jump here, I'll use the thumb up button here to do the standard stuff like a dragon punch super easy dragon punch. You can even be already walking forwards and then just press two buttons and get a dragon punch immediately. So especially when you're in the middle of a battle, you just want to very quickly react and do a dragon punch. It's just like, whoop, there it is. Now, another thing that I've just noticed that is a nice benefit of using keyboard keys instead of using buttons is that with a layout like this, you can see your fingers are very naturally very close together. Like on a keyboard, you just have them very close together like this. When you use a button box layout, often you have the keys like instead of having them close together like this, because the keys are of a certain size, you have your fingers spread out a little bit like this. Now, completely up to you which one you find more natural. I'm totally fine with having my fingers spread out like this. But if you're very particular about that sort of thing, and you prefer your fingers to be close together like they would be on a keyboard, then this layout may well work out better for you. One thing that isn't so easy is when you're doing double tapping on keyboard keys. Now, this is one of the main things that I have personally against using keyboard keys is that double tapping on them, as you can see, it not only is it kind of awkward, but also just kind of hurts because of the shape. Like when you double tap on an action button, like a Sanwa button or a Gamer Finger button like this, it feels really nice because this is, a, this is a convex shape which is designed to be double tapped. It's not designed to be double tapped, but you can double tap it and it won't hurt. But with a keyboard key, when you double tap this, like just get your own keyboards out and try this. Like try and double tap on this. It's kind of painful. And the reason you'd want to be double tapping is that when you're doing the SOCD shortcuts for dashing is like, for example, you might be walking forwards like this and you want to do a very quick dash forward. You can actually, instead of going tap tap, you can actually do a double tap like this. So use these two fingers here to do a double tap like that. And it, it's very much more difficult on, on a keyboard key. But it's not actually necessary. It's not necessary to double tap like this to do it. It's just, it's just a neat shortcut that you can do. Most of the time, if you want to be doing a very fast shortcut dash, you can just be holding for it and just do tap tap and it still works. Now, just like I was explaining before, obviously doing the instant air fireballs. You can do it using the up button, but it is significantly easier if you use the thumb up module. So just to show you larger like this, instead of doing it like this, you can just do one, two, three. Three completely separate appendages and do it like this. 
comes out much, I mean, personally, personally, this feels like a much more efficient way to do this move. All right, and like I was showing you with Zangief, normally I would have to do this gymnastics with my hands to do a pile driver. Normally I would have to be doing like down, 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 up with my middle finger. So I can do it traditionally where I do the 270 motion like this. Or you can do all of these shortcuts because technically in Street Fighter V, you don't even need to do these directions in the correct order. You can also go like down, back, forward, jump, and that will still work. There you go. And if you want to do the super, instead of going like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and my middle finger having to do four different actions, I can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and each appendage only has to do one action each. There you go. Significantly easier because it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, bosh. Plus there's probably shortcuts that you can come up with. I don't really play Zangief a whole lot, but there's other shortcuts you can probably do, especially in Street Fighter V with all the input leniency. All right, I am super impressed by what this can do. And given the price for the low cost of $28, you can get straight into keyboard key gaming. And for 25 extra dollars, you can have a fully fledged all button controller or button box or whatever it is you want to call it. Now, there are a few things that were concerning to me when I first picked this up, I was just like, is this going to work out? The first one was not having SOCD cleaning built in. I was concerned about that. It just so happens that on this Quamba Obsidian, it looks like SOCD is already taken care of by the PCB in here. The second thing that was concerning for me is the shape of this thumb up button. As you can see, it's got a concave shape. And when you're using keyboard keys, the concave shape works perfectly because you're using your, your fingertips. However, when you use a sort of thumb jump button here. Can you see the angle of your thumb doesn't actually match the angle of the concavity. I, I, I don't even think that is a word, but the concaveness of this button, unless you were to put it like this. So your options are, you could actually pull this off the controller and rotate it around so that it's at this angle. However, in the short testing that I've done, and again, I only just got it out of the box today, I am not finding any issues. Now, I can't say over long term, it may bother me after hours and hours of playing. Or two, you could actually do what I'm actually kind of planning on doing, which is to remove the space bar from your, your other keyboards. And this one, for example, this is a traditional space bar and it's not concave. Like there is a reason why space bars are not concave and it's because you use them at an angle like this. And I don't know if this is actually gonna work. So it does actually work. I can place it over here, but can you see it's not very, it's not very stable because what you really need is you need a button that has been cut out like this with the plus mark shape here in the middle, but also these plus mark shapes for stability here on the side. Other things I was concerned about is the height of this controller. As you can see, like I showed you earlier, it does sit on top of your stick because it's designed as a mod for sticks that weren't designed to be button box controllers to start with. And as a result, it means that your left hand and your thumb up button are going to be significantly higher than the height of your buttons here. I don't really feel it that much because I hover my wrists up here. I don't actually have my, rest, my wrists resting on the stick. But if you are the type of player that insists on resting your wrists on your stick like this, then you are going to notice it more that your thumb is up here. Now, following that point about these things actually jutting out of the top of the stick are things like when you press buttons like this. Normally, you might be used to using one finger pressed down to do a throw like this in Street Fighter, or you might be used to using your thumb and your next finger like this to do a throw. This does, you do feel it bump on your hand because this is coming up so much like this. So in an ideal situation, you would just drill a hole here and just put a button instead of a space bar, which juts up this much up off the stick. But the main point of this mod is so that you can install it without drilling holes in your existing stick. Really, I feel like there's, quite a specific market for people who would want this. People who don't want to build their own button box, but they want to try and see what it feels like to play on a button box layout. So having keyboard keys on the left and maybe a thumb jump button here, but with the nice arcade style button which they're used to for fighting games like so. Now regarding the placement of this Wazoo controller, because you have to have the cable going into the hole, the existing hole of your stick, it means that they cannot really afford to put this thing a little bit lower. And visually, you may think that you want this to be a little bit lower, but in my testing so far, I actually really like the position. If you like see my hands here with both thumbs on the thumb jump and having my hands over here, the positioning of these arrow keys is just right actually. Now the installation itself was very simple. I literally pulled out my old arcade stick, put this one in, plugged in the cable and it was already ready to use. And 
in terms of ruggedness, it's actually so solid that if I'm holding up the stick by just the Cardi Mod itself, it holds the whole stick, like the weight of the stick really well. However, there are questions of durability. If you were in a tournament and you got really heated, you could potentially pull this cable out of the, the Cardi Mod and then you would lose the ability to jump with your thumb. So build wise, you can see it's just like, do I really want to use a controller where there are like cables on the surface of the stick that could potentially get pulled out while I'm playing? You, I, you probably don't want to be in that situation. But again, this is kind of a transitional product. If you don't want to spend $200 on buying a stick which is dedicated to a button box layout, or if you're not sure, and this is especially important, if you're not sure whether you want to go for a wazard layout or you want to go for a thumb up layout, which is traditional button box layout, this gives you the best of both worlds because for $28, you can buy just the wazard controller and see if that works for you. Maybe all these shortcuts that I was personally having trouble with, maybe it's absolutely fine for you. Maybe you can do your, your instant air fireballs just no problem with only a Wazard controller. If that's fine for you, $28, you're done. If you're like me though, and you try out this one, the Wazard controller, that's $28 and you go, okay, well, actually I like the feel of the keyboard keys and the ability to take the keycaps out and actually just install whatever Cherry MX switches I want in here. I could put blue switches or red switches or brown switches. I like that, but I don't like pressing jump with my middle finger. Literally, you can just transition straight over to button box layout for $25 extra. You plug this in and <laughs> I didn't even have to unplug the controller from the computer, from the PlayStation. This is a very flexible system and very good for people who are transitioning from PC gameplay, who want to see if they can fight with a keyboard style controller, but really just anyone who owns an arcade stick and traditionally plays with a lever and wants to move into the world of leverless controllers. Amazing. And as luck would have it on the Quambo Obsidian, SOCD is already built in. But again, if you don't have SOCD built into the PCB of your fight stick, that's probably not very expensive. All right, everyone, that's all for the quick unbox and test of the Cardi Mod Plus and the thumb up. I've placed it down here where I would put my thumb for a standard button box controller, but you could put it anywhere you want, really. If you want to put it here, like in between here, you can actually use your left thumb in any angle you want, or you can put it down here. And obviously the cable it comes with is quite short, but if you wanted to put it in some totally random wacky area, you could just get a longer couple wires and just install it anywhere you wanted. Personally, I'm really impressed by what you get here. The ability to install it on any arcade stick without drilling any holes is probably the most important thing. If you want to buy the Cardi Mod Plus, you just need to think carefully about why you're installing such a thing in your arcade stick. Is it one, because you already own an arcade stick and you want the cheapest possible way to get, I, I don't know if it's the cheapest possible way, but you want a cheap way to get a Wazid style controller on your stick? Or do you actually kind of want a button box controller which allows you to do thumb jumping, which is something you would do on a standard sort of button box controller like one of these. If you do want to buy a controller like this, which is a button box from the start, you're looking at something like $200 and up, depending on how many LED upgrades you have on the controller. But if you really are unsure whether you want a Wazid controller or a standard button box style thumb up, jump button controller, then this probably is the smartest thing to get first because it allows you to test out this layout. However, there is a risk that you could give yourself the wrong idea because I feel like more important than learning to get good at Street Fighter on a button box, the more important thing to do first is learn how to play on a controller like this without injuring yourself. Although it does give you all the buttons in the right place. If you aren't very careful with your wrist, you might give yourself the wrong impression. It's just like, oh, I don't know, playing on a Wazid controller and playing on a thumb up controller, like it really hurt my wrist. Like it might not be the fault of this layout. This is not standard to play with your left hand a little bit higher than your right hand on a, on a button box controller like that. So this is, I just think it's something that you should consider. And the benefits are you can try both layouts, Wazid or standard button box, and you also get the ability to do all of the convenient things like changing out the Cherry MX switches for any MX style switch that you want. Or even, I think I could just take this off and just replace it with keys from my computer. So you're opening yourself up to the world of custom keycaps. You're opening yourself up to the world of custom MX switches. And you're also opening yourself up to the scary world of <laughs> like, you could like get into the whole thing where you're like lubing up switches. And just while pulling apart my keyboard, I've discovered that the left shift button is actually the perfect shape for the thumb up. 
because the left shift on my keyboard actually has three of those Lego holes in the back of it, just like the standard thumb up button. This is a really easy way to test things out without damaging your controller and without doing any complicated modifications. Plus also just aesthetically it looks hilarious. It's kind of like the DeLorean from Back to the Future. It's like got all these weird cables coming out. You don't know which part of this is Mr. Fusion. Well that's all I've got for you today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel hit the subscribe button. Do leave me a comment below if you want to talk about this controller in the comments or if you want to continue the discussion you can actually join us on the Nihongo Gamer Discord. There's a link in the description for that as well and if you want to watch me using controllers like these I often have controllers like this or controllers like this and I actually try them out on stream join me on twitch you can follow me for free over there until the next Nihongo Gamer video and or stream I'll see you around